Welcome to the Raspberry Pi Dramble video series. It's been a while since the last video and you'll notice a few differences. Uh, since then, I've actually had a major surgery for my Crohn's disease. I've gotten LASIK, so I have no more glasses. I got this nice new microphone. Uh, and also I have a new baby. So it's, it's actually been a while since the last video, so I'm sorry for that, but I'm excited to get back into it and make some more videos. The last video I made, which was quite a while ago, was basically setting up the LEMP stack uh, with Nginx, MySQL, and PHP, along with some other things, um, to get ready to deploy a Drupal application to the cluster of Raspberry Pis. And you can see that the Raspberry Pis are here booted. And when I'm on this page, um, the pydramble.com page, which is pointing at the load balancer on the Raspberry Pi, the top one up here, uh, when I refresh the page, you'll see that the requests hit the load balancer and then they go to one of the two uh, web servers, these, these other ones in the top. Uh, so that's working great, but it's, it's saying file not found, and that's not very useful to me. Uh, so the next thing that we're going to do is deploy Drupal to it. And uh, there's a page on the wiki that has the instructions for deploying Drupal to the Raspberry Pis. And the command to do that is basically running the playbook that's inside the Drupal directory. Uh, so I'll go ahead and run that command right now. And while it's running, I'll show you how that's supposed to work. So basically, it calls this playbook, and the first thing that it does, you'll see already the, the LEDs have turned red, indicating that there's something getting deployed to them. Uh, then it's going to check and see, has Drupal been installed yet? Because this playbook is actually useful for two different things. One is if you're installing Drupal fresh or deploying a Drupal project fresh. The second thing it does is if there's already Drupal installed, it checks if there's updates, and if there's updates, it'll run other parts of the provisioning, like it'll run drush up db, and it'll run a configuration import, things like that. Uh, so the next step is it'll run deploy, and if I go to tasks deploy, uh, it does a few different things. One is it makes sure that there's uh, the, the directory permissions are all correct. Then it will either download a copy of Drupal uh, at whatever version you specify as a tarball and expand it, uh, or it will check out a project if you use a, a Git repository to deploy your Drupal site. And that way you can either install a new version of Drupal and make sure that it's running the, the latest correct version of Drupal, or you can have a project that you've already been uh, using in Git. There's actually a lot of different ways you can do this kind of deployment. Uh, these are two of the most basic ways that, that most people use. Uh, but you can also do things like just have a composer file, and that would be the way that you deploy Drupal. Uh, or you can use something like Acquia's BLT, where there's a whole bundle of stuff. There's tools for development and tools for deployment and tools for testing all built together. Um, but in this case, we're just doing these, these simpler ways to, to illustrate how Ansible can help you. Uh, so th after that, it, it checks if there's a composer file in the directory that, that has Drupal in it. And if there is, it will run composer install to make sure all the dependencies are there correctly. Uh, and then after that, it sets up the settings.php file correctly so that Drupal can be installed safely. Uh, so now you'll see that it's already finished with those tasks, and now it's installing Drupal. When it installs Drupal, it actually only does it on one of the two web servers. If you tried installing Drupal twice, you'd get an error because Drupal uh, uses a database, and there's only one copy of the database no matter how many web servers you have. Uh, so in this case, we're skipping it on the second server, and we're just running the installation on the first server. And there's a couple other things that we're doing special here. It's, it's just using Drush SI, which is Drush Site Install. Uh, but it's, it's passing in the admin name that we have configured and the admin password for the user1 account. It's running the command in the doc root that we just deployed. And it's also allowing you to set whatever install, install profile that you've set up in your config file. The last thing is it's also running this command as the www data user, which is the user that Nginx uses when it's running. This way, the file permissions inside of that Drupal installation will all be correct so that you can do things like upload files and uh, maintain it uh, in the future using Nginx and using the web interface, things like that. Uh, so after it does all that, it inserts a UUID that you set up for your site. There's actually a lot of different ways you can do this, but this is the simplest, so I'm just using that. Uh, and then finally, it will write a, a file to the file system saying, hey, Drupal's installed. Next time, you don't have to go through and do any extra checks. Just check the, for this file. 
So now we have Drupal installed, and you'll see it also did things. Uh, it restarted Nginx and restarted PHP FPM just to make sure that memories are cleared and all the caches are cleared. Uh, so I'm going to go over to my Chrome uh, where I had this file not found, and we'll see if I refresh the page, you'll see it sends the request to one of the two web servers, and then it sits for a little bit because this is the first time it's ever loading the site, so it's building all of its caches. And there's the home page. Uh, this is running whatever the latest version of Drupal is at this point in time. And if I log in and go to the uh, logged in site reports area, we can see what version it's running and, and whether there's any bugs or errors that we need to, to work on. Uh, while I'm doing this too, as I'm going to these different pages, you'll notice uh, that on the Raspberry Pis themselves, when I when I visit a page, it shows a request to just one of the Pis sometimes, or if I'm going somewhere, it, it might send requests to, to both of the web servers. That's because the way I have Nginx configured, it's actually distributing every request. So the request for this SVG, and the request for this icon, the request for the style sheets, all those requests are divided up equally among the web servers. Sometimes you'll want to set it so that all requests from one client go to one web server and all the requests from another client go to another web server, kind of pinning clients to different web servers for better speed for those particular clients. Other times for scalability, you might want to have them distributed more evenly. That's called round robin style and that's the way that I have it set up right now. Um, so we have Drupal running on the Raspberry Pi cluster and that's great. Uh, some other things that you can experiment with now that you have Drupal running is you can um, run, you can install different versions if you're using Git deployments. And when you do that, it will actually run those update hooks and run config import and things like that. Uh, another thing that you can do is there's, there's an example script in here. This is great for when you're testing things out. It's in the uh, setup resets Drupal file. Uh, this playbook actually removes everything. So you can install everything using the Drupal playbook and then you can remove everything again by running this, this playbook here. And it's great because then you can kind of reset the pies without having to delete everything and start from scratch. You just remove Drupal. Uh, and I'm going to run that playbook now to show you how this looks. Uh, so I'm going to say Ansible playbook, uh, give it the same inventory, and then give it the path to this playbook, the reset Drupal playbook. And this actually does a couple interesting things. It, it removes the Drupal installation and the folders and the cron job and all that kind of stuff. But then it also uh, runs some plays on other hosts. So you'll see it's doing all these things and then it's gonna switch to the database host, which is a separate server, the one on the bottom, uh, actually the two on the bottom. It'll drop the Drupal database. Uh, and then after it does that, it actually switches to the load balancer on the top and it rest restarts Nginx after it clears out Nginx's reverse proxy cache. That way um, we can make sure that when we install Drupal again, there's nothing from the old installation that's gonna interfere with our new installation. Uh, so that was an overview of how I deployed Drupal to the Raspberry Pi Dramble. Uh, in future videos, I'm gonna show you how to do things like uh, fail over MySQL servers, since there's two MySQL servers and we have some sort of um, high availability set up there, uh, and how to do other things with the Raspberry Pi cluster. I hope you like this video. If you do, uh, please support my projects on Patreon. Uh, I have an account there. It's linked from the Raspberry Pi Dramble website. Also, special thanks to, to uh, Oscar, who has been unbelievably helpful with Drupal VM and some other Drupal projects that I work on and all the playbooks that I use uh, for the Pi Dramble and for other things. Um, he's been, he was my first supporter on Patreon and he gets a shout out in this video.